Owen, McGab, and Nawal. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. John, thanks for having me. It is a pleasure to be with you. I'm joining you from south of Salt Lake City in Utah. Where are you at? Uh, Germantown, Maryland, very close to uh, D.C. And Wonderful. I love the D.C. and Maryland area. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm super excited to have a really fun conversation around process and scaling and really how we can increase and organize workflow, increase productivity, uh, and do all of that within a really dynamic, winning organizational culture. Uh, I, there's a lot there that I just said, and we'll, we'll unpack that, and we'll uh, dig into it. But ultimately, the, the goal in any organization is that we want to have leadership who supports a team to do work in a replicable way where they can be both productive and efficient, but also have the flexibility to work in a way that makes sense for them, where they can create and innovate along the way. Uh, and so all of this is going to go into our conversation that we have together today. As we get started, I wanted to share Owen's bio with everybody. Owen is the CEO and co-founder of Sweet Process, an easy-to-use software that enables company executives and their employees to collaborate together to quickly document and or improve their standard operating procedures, processes, and policies. Owen was previously the CEO of Hire Your Virtual Assistant, a virtual assistant service for small business owners. His specialties include business development, negotiation, operations management, and much, much more. Again, a pleasure to have you, Owen. Anything else you would like to share with me or my listeners just by way of your personal background or context before we dive on in further? Well, that, that is it. And I'll, I'll let you lead the way and we we'll elaborate as we go. Okay. So why don't we start with your current company, your CEO and founder of Sweet Process. And as I mentioned in the introduction, you know, the goal here is to really help increase productivity through organization of workflow and standard operating procedures and such. Tell us a little bit more about the company, why you founded it, uh, and, and then we can start to dig in a little bit more into the specifics. So I, I'll start by saying the company was founded in around the fourth quarter of 2013, right? And so uh, I, I'll talk about how we got founded and how we got started. So before then, I was, uh, you know, like I said, uh, like you said, uh, um, working in a company as a CEO of a company that uh, provides people here in the U.S. with, you know, back office support, you know, virtual assistant and all that. And so my team was based in the Philippines, right? And uh, at this point, it was popular for people to start understanding as a small business owner that you can actually get you know, support for ab abroad, right? B before then, it used to be a thing where you think that only the big companies like the Verizons and all these uh, phone companies will do such a thing. And then there was a book that came, two books actually, that came out around that same period. Um, one was a four-hour work week. The other was, I think... Um, the World is Flat by Timothy, uh, for, for forgetting his uh, last name, sorry, but they basically made uh, small business owners understand that they can actually do the same thing. And it wasn't just limited to the big companies that they could actually find support and get people working for them abroad. And so that's what I was doing was you know, primarily working with the small business owners. But the thing is, when they read these books, they come and think that, you know, uh, they can just magically just hire somebody and the person who just start from day one, take over their work and start delivering results. And so one of the things I had to, to do was teach them how to properly delegate the work to someone else who's going to do it for them, someone else who has a different culture and, and maybe, maybe even working at a different time zone. And to do that, it involves basically spending the time to basically uh, document procedures for how the work is done. And so that, you know, when you offload the work to somebody, they're working off something that with instructions, step-by-step -step checklist. And from there, you can build and improve upon that you know, to continuously improve the, the end result. So, you know, uh, what we were running into was that uh, then, you know, first of all, we'll have to educate the uh, our customer that, you know, this is what you had to do. And then we'll bring them to the table and say, okay, uh, let's, and we used to use Skype then to have like a, you know, recorded conversation. Okay, what is that task that is taking the most time right now that you want to hand over? talk to us through about it, you know, show your screen and all that stuff. And someone else on our team will take that stuff and actually build, uh, you know, a step-by-step -step procedure of how that is done. But the problem we had on our end was that the tools to actually document procedures were either they were very hard to use because they were, you know, enterprise level tools, and then they were not really built for, you know, the small guys, or we were hacking together a bunch of different tools together to try to make this happen. So in the back of my mind, I was like, there has to be a way to make this easier. You know, um, we have to figure out a way to do this. And so I was, fast forward, I was invited to another podcast by a fellow named uh, um, 
Andrew Warner, and he has a, I don't know if you know him, he has a podcast called Mixergy and uh, like Mixed Energy, but Mixed en- uh, Mixergy. And so basically you come on there to talk about your startup, uh, your tech startup and how you built your tech startup, sold for millions, so on and so forth. But then he also has another part of his podcast where it's a paid membership for his listeners where uh, it's not people coming to talk about the biography of their startup, but they're talking more about, you know, specific topics like how to drone sales, how to do specific marketing things and so on and so forth. And so it's more of a specific topic. You come on there and teach, right? And so I was invited on that uh, uh, section of his podcast where it's for his uh, paid membership. And I was brought on there to teach people how to basically take what's in their head and turn it into procedures so that their staff can you know, take over or they can outsource the work. Lo and behold, my co-founder Jervis, who is a, you know, a, a programmer, was part of that uh, membership program. And he listened to what I was talking about and how I work people over, you know, through what I was doing in my other company. And he reached out to me and said, hey, uh, he's, he has this idea he's working on uh, along the lines of what I was talking about. And he wants to get more insight from me. And, you know, lo and behold, I took that call. You know, and, and we had a conversation. I was like, dude, I'm experiencing this exact issue right now. And if you can build something along the line of, you know, what will make this thing simpler and easy to use, you know, I, I, I'm not interested in just telling you what to do. And, and that's it. I'm interested in building this stuff together. And so we decided, okay, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, make this business, you know, a, a sweet process and, and, and build this company together. And I told him, I said, you know, instead of rushing to uh, go ahead and, you know, build the software, you know, like most, uh, you know, developers, they're excited, they have the skill set to do this, and they want to go in, you know, I said, don't worry about that, let's, let's focus on trying to have conversations with potential users of the software so that we can have an idea of, you know, what exactly the, the root issue or the root problems they have when it comes to documenting procedures, when it comes to having one single place employees can go and find stuff. And so that we can take all our findings and then, you know, use that as a means to build the, the software as opposed to just going without any feedback. And so we spent the first, you know, one month or so just having conversations over 30 calls or more with people from different industries, just, you know, having this conversation. And we went back behind the scenes and, you know, just basically, you know, categorize all the com- conversations we're having and basically was, give, you know, able to come back to, you know, this is what ours needs to have, the, the core root things that we need to solve because these are the root problems that everybody's telling us about. And so that, you know, when we released our own software, it was, you know, in my mind, the simplest and you know, most intuitive version of what it should be compared to all the other ones out there and even till now. So, yeah. So that's how we started. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah. That's a, that's a great background. Thank you for sharing that. And, and I think every organization wrestles with this, right? Especially uh, new startups who are starting to scale. Uh, <clears throat> there's only so long that the founding team can continue to, you know, when you're a founder of a new startup, you're kind of wearing a thousand hats, right? You're doing a little yeah. bit of everything, but over time you, you hire new people and you have to delegate and you have to, to have other people take some of that load. And as you grow larger and larger and larger, you have to replicate that. And I'm not an advocate for like 100% complete replication because every individual person has to bring themselves to their work and have the, the flexibility to be creative. So you, you, you want to build in some flexibility, but having, you know, checklists and having, uh, ha- having standard operating procedures in ways that um, people, especially new people, can quickly get onboarded and up to speed to understand what they're doing, how to do it, how to navigate all the, the systems and such, and to do it in a user-friendly way, that is huge. And then, you know, I, I like to say, <clears throat> start off don't reinvent the wheel, start off simple, follow the manual, follow the, the checklist, follow the standard operating procedures, learn the systems, and then figure out a better way. And then, you know, if you can figure out a better way, that's great. And then you can teach the rest of us how to do it better. Um, and that's great. And that can energize people and get them engaged. I remember one job I had, um, this was years and years ago, before I even uh, finished my college education, I worked in a factory. And it, again, it was one of those things you go in and, and I was doing I was assembling undercarriage, the suspension system undercarriages of big tractor trailers. So it was repetitive work, but it was also fairly detailed. And there were a lot of steps and there were a lot of things you had to do. And, and over the course of a, a 10 hour shift, I would, you know, maybe do about one of these an hour, right? So, so it's repetitive, but it's 
intensive and, and it takes a while to complete, you know, all the steps into one of these things. Yeah. Well, I, I remember just being so invigorated because I mean, being in a factory is not the most invigorating, naturally invigorating setting. Um, but my boss kind of challenged me and said, Hey, you know, let's see if you can figure out how to do this better. See if, if you can figure out how to do this more efficiently, faster, more, be more productive. And if you can, and you can free up some more time, then we can teach you other things. Like we can teach you how to weld and we can, you know, do some of these other things. And so that's what I did. And I took it as a personal challenge. And over the course of working in that area, I worked at that factory for about six months. Um, and over the course of, uh, of a few months, I was able to take to, to systematically, you know, trial and error, um, try different kind of orders of doing things, trying different approaches. And I got to the point where I could do it in like half an hour, what used to wow. take an hour. It was still with the same level of quality and same quality output. Um, and that freed up essentially half of my day every day that I could then go help the welders and learn how to weld, or I could go to work in other stations. Now, this is a, a, a factory example. I know most of what you're doing is in an office setting, but the, the principle is the same. When you have standard operating procedures and you have processes, that's fantastic, especially when someone's new, and then build in some flexibility so that people can learn how to do it better uh, and, and then even give them the chance to share what they're doing and how they're doing it better with others so that others can learn and grow. That just adds layers of, of uh, value and engagement and excitement you know, that someone can get from, from their work that they perform. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is that, you know, people might think that, you know, doing this, you know, uh, when you think of procedures, they're like, oh, I want to just start writing this thing now. I don't even have the time to do it. And so one of the things I like to do is give people the options of, you know, uh, basically like cheat codes on how to actually get it done and not feel bogged down by it. So, uh, first of all, where do you want to start? Uh, first of all, the first thing I, I tell people to think of, okay, ask yourself this critical question. Is this task needed for my business is this something that we really need to do or not because if it's not needed to be done then you might as well just eliminate it altogether there's no point you know documenting procedure for that so now and, and I, can i just can i just add to that point go ahead um i think there are way more of those things than we sometimes realize uh, <laughs> that we just for whatever reason historically that people started to do these things and then mm -hmm. we just think we have to just keep doing them try the knowledge yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and a lot of those, those things simply don't matter. Maybe they mattered at one point, but they don't matter anymore. And yeah. so we have to ask ourselves those questions and do a little pruning, right, of the systems, the processes, the procedures, so we know what's actually essential and get rid of all the rest of it. Yeah. And so let's assume we've asked that, that question and now we are down to stuff that we actually do need to do. Then there's now two categories that comes across where it's, okay, the task that is needed to be done and it happens you know, on a recurring basis, but it's, it's uh, 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 income producing. And this other sort of task that you know, happens on, you know, it's, it's needed to be done, it happens quite often, but it's, uh, it's not income producing. It's more like, you know, uh, your production side of things, but this side is where you, you know, your customers, you know, come in on, uh, and bring in revenue. A lot of people might be tempted to start documenting the income generating tasks, but I say don't do that yet because if you document how that those income generating tasks are, well, and then you go ahead and bring people to take over from you so they can do that work, now you have more customers with more need and more things they need to produce. And on this other hand, you, you have bottlenecks where you were uh, preventing you from actually delivering the results. So I say, focus on this other side first, so that you know if you identify the, the biggest bottleneck of your time and document how that work is done, hand it over to somebody else who can take it over, you know, and start getting it done. Not, not even 100% perfectly, but at least, you know, anywhere from like 60% and up and you improve from there. Now you are able to document the next bottleneck of your time and so on and so forth. And before you know, you've freed up yourself to now start focusing on these income generating tasks. So you can start documenting those as well. But, you know, if you start from the other way, you're going to end up having more work at being added to, you know, chaos already so that doesn't work for you that doesn't work for your customers so start with the bottlenecks first so now you've identified the biggest bottleneck of your time and uh how do you document it people auto automatically think that you know it, it has to be an encyclopedia no the, the checklist should be as simple as possible the first thing is give yourself the permission that you know it's continuous improvement where you're going to start from the barest minimum version of this thing and you and your staff will work together to improve upon 
what you are documenting based on them taking the instruction and working with you to build it out. And also as they do work, when they come across something that is off or something that needs to be improved, they come back to improve it. So what goes into the first version of this document? I call it a minimum viable procedure. And all it has is just the title of the procedure and the title of all the steps. That's it. Nothing fancier than that. That's just a skeleton outline of it. Then what do you do to get details filled into it? Right. So I'm, I'm sharing with you how you can do this on your own, even without using our software sweep process. But, you know, the concept, if you apply it, it will it will it will help you get these things documented fast. So now the next thing is uh, you probably have trained somebody verbally on this before the task, like a manager or somebody. Now get them to work with you to build out the details of each of the steps. And the goal is, hey, don't go in there and you know, write a 10 page for each step. Just go in there and write the minimum information on each step. And it can be screenshots. It can be small, you know, short videos that go into each step and so on and so forth. But go ahead and build it out. And now you've gone from that first version that was just a skeleton outline to now something that has some details in it. And then what happens next? Okay, start having, when you're assigning tasks to your employees, that procedure that you've documented is right there in front of them so that, uh, they are following the steps and getting work done. But the important thing is when they come across some issue or something that was not addressed uh, by the procedure that, you know, they are able to uh, bring that information back to your manager or your team or, or you so that you can go ahead and uh, um, build that and, and improve upon the documentation. So that's how, uh, you know, you get from, you know, uh, identifying what tasks to work on starting to document the minimum version of it and getting your team in, uh, involved in documenting. And now you might also say, okay, uh, I don't have time. My teammates don't have time. So what do I do? Well, there are people called process consultants and that's literally what they do. They come in to your company. They work with you to brainstorm, uh, basically evaluate your current pro uh, processes that you have, whether it's written down or in your head. And then they help you uh, in, in some instances document and optimize what you have, right? So uh, if it's something that you don't have the time or your employees don't have the time to do this together, then you can always outsource this, get the process consultant to come in. Obviously, it's going to cost some money and help you do that. So I've just given you some cheat codes on how to go about doing this without, you know, being bogged down by the whole idea, you know, just some steps, move forward. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's fantastic. And I think anyone listening who has ever been in the scaling phase or the onboarding phase of, of new employees, you know how challenging this can be and how how long it can take to get someone up to speed. And you can you can shrink that time down exponentially if you have these types of resources in place. I mean, I, I think like even if you just even without all of the uh, the outlines and the fleshing things out, even just having a list of like. Here's a list of daily tasks, weekly tasks, monthly tasks, yearly tasks, just, just so you know, like, these are the things I should be doing. I have no idea how to do them, but at least I know I should be doing it. You know, those, those types of resources can be very helpful. And then you start to flesh it out so they can actually learn how to do it. That's even better. And, and you just add to all of this and, and new employees do appreciate it. Now, again, you, you provide flexibility and you give them the resources so they can learn and then let them run wild, right? Once they learn how to do it, then if they can figure out a better way, that's fantastic. If, uh, and we can uh, all learn together and grow together. Uh, and I think that actually feeds into the last part that I wanted to discuss briefly before we close up for today. And that is having, you know, a really dynamic, cultivating a winning and dynamic culture within your organization. Now, sometimes when we talk about processes and procedures and stuff, the last thing people are thinking is, oh, that's going to be a really fun place to work or a great dynamic <laughs> culture. But how, how, how can we leverage these types of standard operating procedures and processes that are systematized um, so that we can scale and be more productive and such? How, how do we also leverage that towards a winning dynamic culture? So when you think about the place that you want to work with, you work at, it's a place where you feel like your voice is heard and you feel like you're a part of making the decisions, right? But if you think about it even deeper, like they're documenting how work is done. And if they are including you in that process of collaborating, to get, collaborating together with the manager and all that to, to build out how work is done, how else is your voice being uh, included other than that? I mean, like you are literally involved in the creation of how work is done in that company. That's the first thing. So I feel like, you know, yeah, switch the mindset and realize that you're getting your voice heard just by documenting stuff and, and being involved in that process. The next thing too is this is a very creative thing to do because now uh, 
by the fact that you have these documents in place, let's say you do a task that's every three months or whatever, you do it every three months. If you don't have these documents in place, the next time you want to do it, you're going to be spending time, context switching, trying to remember how it's done, wasting time. But if you have the documents in place, you don't have to worry about that. You, you know where to start. And this now frees your mind to be creative, to say, okay, we know we have these steps that we have to follow, but how can I shorten these steps down? How can I make things faster? How can I make the, you know, the output better? This is where creativity comes into play. So by having documentation in place, you have that mind, uh, ability to be creative and, 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 and improve what you guys are doing at the company. So I, I feel like it's, it's, it's necessary to have this. Yeah, I think that's very well said. That's exactly how I approach this as well. And, and I think about it, in, in this case, we're just talking about uh, people creating these kinds of resources to help each other out. Um, but another way of framing this is, you know, we, we talk about deep machine learning and artificial intelligence, and there are more and more um, computer software and systems in place to help take away the mundane that we do, like the, those kind of grinding uh, repeated, repeated kind of tasks that people have to do each and every day. And people get worried about that because they're like, oh, the, the, the machines are going to take over my job. The AI is going to, to put me out of work and whatever. And I think that's, it's exactly the wrong argument. It's, it's exactly what you just said, whether it's AI, machine learning, um, some sort of a software, or just simply people putting together using a, a system like yours at Sweet Process and then putting um, standard operating procedures and processes together so that people can work smarter, better, faster. Um, either way, all of that, what that does is that frees you up to be more creative, to spend more of your time on strategic things, on creative and innovative things. Uh, and those are the things that people tend to derive more meaning and value from in their work. And so yeah. it's a no brainer in my mind, like let's try to take, take as much work as we can out of the work. There's like, there's no, there's no reason why we have to um, be struggling every quarter to try to remember yeah. how to how to figure out how to do something and spend hours on something that really should only take 15, 20 minutes, right? Uh, and and, and we're, then, not, we're not even talking about if someone leaves the company with the knowledge. No, yeah, it's, it's just not, the it's same person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. the whole issue. Yeah. Yeah, and there's lots of things like that that I only do once a year, once a quarter. When you're only doing it that often, you can't remember exactly what you're doing or how to do it. So then you spend half your day trying to get that report done or to do, yeah. to do whatever. And instead of taking the half hour, an hour just to get it, to knock it out, you end up spending half a day or longer to do the same thing. Well, guess what? When you do everything that you've been talking about and sharing with us, when you do all of that, you've just freed up a bunch of time that now you can do creative things, things that are more yeah. meaningful and valuable to you and your organization. Yeah, exactly why. Wonderful. Well, Owen, it has just been a pleasure. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap up for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, uh, and then give us a final word on that topic for today. So I know that people listening to this so far have gotten some tips on how to do this on their own, but sometimes you might want to start, you know, um, instead of having a blank canvas or a blank template, you want to start with something uh, kind of like something you can refer to and build upon. So for that reason, I have a free gift for your, for your listeners. Basically, it's a, 52, it's a PDF that comes with 52 standard operating uh, procedure templates that you can look at. And based on whatever tasks you're looking to work on, you might find some ideas that you can build upon. And to get that, go to sweetprocess.com forward slash HCI. So sweet like candy, process like process, and HCI, which is short for the podcast we are on right now. So uh, go ahead and you'll be able to download it and uh, you know get those templates and check it out. And one thing I'm going to leave with the audience is, you know, uh, just keep in mind that, you know, this is continuous improvement. So if you have that as the basis, then you know you, there's, there's no uh, wrong points to start because if it's continuous improvement, you're going to continuously improve upon it. And so when you start documenting procedures, you can build upon that and your teams can also uh, work with you to build upon that and improve it over time. That's the goal here. Yes, absolutely. That is the goal. Oh, and it has just been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what... Uh, Owen and his team and Sweet Process can do for you. Check out the free resources. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.